Welcome back to another video. It is finally new bike day, and this is my 2020 Nuke Proof Reactor custom build 29 inch trail bike. And yes, I went with less travel. One hundred and forty millimeters up front and one hundred and thirty millimeters out back. Why, you may ask? Well, I did an honest assessment of my typical riding, and while I'd love to lie and say my average ride looks something like this or this, in reality, it typically looks more like this. Oh, this sucks. <laughs> That's taller than I thought. Or this. <laughs> Larger wheels and less travel will lead to better efficiency, yet it's still able to take some of the bigger hits, and it also won't feel as sluggish on a typical trail ride of just pedaling around. I've had this bike for about two months now, and it outperforms my old Jeffsy in nearly every way, going to show that more travel doesn't necessarily mean more better. I decided to do a custom build on this bike because the two aluminum offerings from Nukeproof leave much to be desired in terms of components, and I honestly did not want a carbon frame. I even considered purchasing the carbon factory build of this bike, but at $4,400, I could not wrap my head around it. Fortunately, a quick Google search led me to a bike shop in Austin, Texas called Velo Rangatan, and they just so happened to sell nuke-proof bikes. While they didn't have the complete reactor builds in stock, Wes told me that they did have the frames in stock, and that we can build it up with components that I choose. And that's when the light bulb went off in my head. I can get an aluminum frame with nicer parts that I choose to keep it a little more budget-friendly. So, that's exactly what I did. I went with the RockShox Pike Ultimate 140mm Travel Fork to match up with the RockShox Super Deluxe Ultimate RCT 130mm Shock out back. I feel like RockShox got their naming scheme from a focus group of first graders. Deluxe Ultimate Super Deluxe Ultimate. Whatever their motives were behind naming it, they both feel incredible. I wanted to spend a little extra money on the suspension and then cheap out pretty much on everything else. Pretty much all my other bikes have come with SRAM drivetrains and brakes, so I decided to go with a Shimano SLX 12-speed drivetrain and their four piston brakes with a 200 millimeter rotor up front, 180 millimeter out back. I went with a PNW Rainier Generation 3 dropper post because I use PNW droppers on pretty much every bike I've ever had. They always work, they're budget friendly, they are awesome. So it was no exception on this bike. The bar, stem, saddle, I didn't really have a preference, so I just took whatever Wes had in stock at the time. Uh, the bars and stem are race face effect. The saddle is a WTB Silverado. An extra nice touch is the frame already comes with frame protection all over, but I've already had a pretty serious crash on this bike. No, I'm sorry, I did not film it, so you're just gonna have to take my word for it, but I've scratched the frame in the one place there is no frame protection. Funny how that works. What actually ended up saving me quite a bit of money was the fact that I already had a 29-inch wheel set sitting in my garage from my hardtail. I put 27.5 plus wheels on that bike and never looked back, so I already had these Hunt Enduro Wide wheels with Maxxis Minion 2.5 and Maxxis Aggressor 2.5 inch rear tire. The grand total for this build came out to $3,100 and that was fully assembled by Wes and his team at Velo Rangatan, and that is a big savings over the $4,400 that I considered spending on the carbon version. I bought this bike sight unseen and did expect a few compromises when compared to my Jeffsy, but I was actually very wrong about that. If this bike has taught me anything, it's that geometry is everything, and I should probably pay more attention to it. In a quick comparison with the Jeffsy, the reactor's head tube angle is half a degree slacker in its high setting, or a full degree slacker in its low setting, and that's compared to the Jeffsy's low setting. The reach is 20 millimeters longer, which feels way more comfortable to me, 
and the seat tube angle is half a degree steeper, which does help a bit with climbing. I used to ride the Jeff C only in the lower geometry setting, and so far I've only ridden this bike with the higher geometry setting, and it's still longer, lower, and slacker by comparison. The fitment of this bike for me personally just feels a lot better than the Jeff C. No, the Jeff C was never a bad bike, but once you get on something that feels a little bit better, it's absolutely life-changing. I'm probably gonna switch the geometry on this to the lower rail setting, as they call it, when I go to some bike parks later this year. But for right now, the trail setting, it feels perfect. Sorry, I got a little bit noisy outside, so I moved back inside to film my riding impressions of this bike. I should have enough footage so you don't have to see my face too much anymore, so let's get into that. I expected this bike wouldn't feel as playful with the larger wheels, but it proved me wrong. The wheelbase is only 35 millimeters longer than the Jeff C, so it doesn't feel as huge as I anticipated. I'm still able to do my usual features with ease and find it enjoyable to jump, bunny hop, and even do my rudimentary trials moves. When I first got this bike home, before even riding it, I did weigh it, and it was a full three pounds heavier than the Jeff C. I was actually quite disappointed by this discovery and was wondering if it would be a chore to climb up hills or pedal around. Much to my amazement, I've actually been getting up climbs that I could never do on the Jeff C. This one at McAllister, for example, that I showcased in the last video. Again, geometry is everything. I suppose this extra weight will make me strong like bowl. The suspension feels way more firm than the Jeffsy did. It makes me ride faster. And on this bike, I'd never really noticed that the rear shock is doing anything until I hit a larger drop or something like that. I know it is constantly doing something, but I do like that you don't feel it as much. It's bigger, but somehow just as playful. Heavier, but climbs better. So it must struggle downhill, right? In my testing, I can say no. I feel very confident going down some janky terrain on this bike. I'm actually going to Trestle Bike Park in a couple weeks with this bike, so we'll see how it handles that. But for the downhill that I ride around here in Texas, it's been an absolute blast. Awesome. I'll be filming the ride at Trestle, so we'll see if this bike gets overwhelmed there. In. This bike also feels very planted in corners. Cornering is something that I personally struggle with, but I do feel far better on this bike. My body position feels Dropping more in. proper on this bike, allowing me yeah. to distribute my weight better. Huh. Larger wheels are obviously a bit harder to navigate through really tight sections, but with a little bit of practice, it really isn't noticeable. The only real criticism I have is the weight, oh, yeah. and this bike doesn't feel as snappy off the line like the Jeffsy did. With that extra weight, it does take a little bit more effort to get it up to speed. Once it's up to speed, it maintains it perfectly fine. For example, this rock slab, I wanted to ride up it really fast and bunny hop the top and land in the transition. Unfortunately, the run up wasn't that long and it was slightly uphill, and I couldn't get this thing up to a decent speed to do a nice looking bunny hop, so I ended up just rolling over it. That was a waste of time. So that's the only thing I've noticed in those Woo! quick snap decision, short range uh, oh, features man, that I need to that. conquer. It does take a little bit more planning because the bike isn't as peppy as I would like it to be. Also, when doing longer climbs, that's when you start to feel the weight. Well, the geometry is more friendly for climbing, You, you can't mask heavier weights, unfortunately. The short technical punchy climbs, I'm able to get up relatively easy because the geometry is better. For example, out at Flat Rock Ranch, if I had to keep doing that climb up to the, the Tree of Life, they call it over and over, I probably would not enjoy it as much on this bike as I would something a little bit lighter. With this being a custom build, I can't comment on the normal nuke-proof reactor builds. Uh, like their weight, their, their components, and how they feel. I was anticipating I would lose some playfulness with this bike in exchange for a little bit faster pedaling efficiency, but I'm happy to report that is not the case. I didn't really have to make any sacrifices. The bike is just faster, yet I'm able to still do the same dumb playful things that I like to do. If you couldn't tell already, I absolutely love this bike. When replacing the Jeff C, I didn't expect this bike to outperform it in nearly every aspect, but I'm super stoked that it does. In my last video, I said the Jeff C was a jack of all trades party bike, but this nuke proof reactor can go toe to toe with the Jeff C, but also adds in some day to day pedaling efficiency that the Jeff C kind of lacked. 
Nukeproof has crafted a truly wonderful trail bike, and I think it's a perfect representation of the segment. What's your dream bike setup, and how would you feel going to a smaller travel bike? Let us all know down in the comments below. I may have to film the outro at home. They're weed whacking now, just on the other side of this fence. Before you go, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you aren't already. A new adventure on wheels awaits you weekly, and we'd love to have you here. Thank you so much for watching, and until next week, Stay rowdy within reason. And now some bloopers. People seem to really enjoy that. That was the big takeaway from the last video. Add more bloopers. Here you go. <laughs> and larger wheels and short... God, the sun's coming out so bright. I hate it. Larger wheels. <laughs> Damn it. Construction crew just showed up across the street, so it might get noisy. Ugh. That doesn't sound right. Ooh, that sun. It's getting a little hot. I'm probably going to flip it to the lower. Ah, damn it. There's a guy on a tractor over there. Hello. A big tractor. He's going to cut the grass right behind <laughs> the camera here. There's a big empty grass field. Um, I don't know why I film here. I should probably find a new spot to film, but within a close vicinity to my home, this is probably the quietest place. Nukeproof has crafted... I already forgot the line. I wrote this and I can't remember. I may have to film the outro at home. They're, they're, they're weed whacking now just on the other side of this fence. I get it, that's their job. They shouldn't have to stop for me. I have to stop for them. They're the ones actually doing hard work. I'm talking to a camera by myself on an empty playground.